Listen, as I said in the other interviews, I'm going to commend Universal on the matte paintings because right. it's amazing behind Because we're in Denver, right? Right, 100%. It's pretty crazy, though, uh, that we're in Malta talking about the extended edition, yeah. which I'm just going to say and is like the superior version of the movie. It is, um, it's, it, it adds so much. What are you most excited for people to actually see in it? I'm excited about it in a very holistic way because that's, uh, you know, it was the movie for a long time and until a very uh, you know, late moment in the process. And so uh, I've always seen it as the movie and, and the film that was released in theaters is, you know, the movie with pieces removed as opposed to this being, you know, the movie with pieces added. Uh, and I think it's an important distinction to make because I think we're used to seeing director's cuts, uh, which this isn't technically, uh, although it kind of is. It's sort of hard to, to put it into a box. But uh, to me, I, I think that the way that this film starts and ends to be able to see the real beginning of the movie, to see it travel over 65 million years and to put the whole thing in context, uh, to me, it, it makes it more powerful. One of the things that I actually respect about Universal with this edition is that usually they make people double dip. Right. And, and I like the fact that you, maybe you want to say it. Oh yeah, I mean, well, not only uh, are we not, you know, releasing this two years from now as something else you have to buy, but if you bought the movie already on iTunes or uh, you know, on VOD, uh, the extended edition is you, it will just show up. You don't have to pay more for that, which I think is, that's a cool move. You mentioned that this was your original cut um, till very late in the process. Right. Uh, what was it like in the editing room for you, like having to like sort of pull out sequences? Was there like, did you have to hit a certain, I'm like there are some bugs around here. No, what is that? It's a college. Is it Seriously? really? Wow, all right. Well, 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 Very anyone, loud Anyone bugs who's in watching Malta. this interview now understands that there are some real bugs in Malta. That sound is a lot. This is not ADR. This no. is, you know. <laughs> watch, watch out for bugs. Right, so but getting into what I was saying, yeah. what was it like in the process for you as a director? Was it something like you had to hit a certain runtime? What was it like for you, that editing? Uh, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do. Um, it was, uh, you know, they say you have to kill your darlings, uh, and that is a something that anyone who gets into into film needs to be prepared to to think uh that way about their film to understand uh that there may be things that need to go in order to streamline it in a way uh obviously it was something uh that i i wish i didn't have to do uh but uh the movie needed to be two and a half hours it was already much longer than any other jurassic movie you know by a good 20 minutes uh and so uh, sitting in there and figuring out what could go without sacrificing people understanding even what's going on in a, like a fundamental way uh, was really the challenge. Uh, and, you know, yeah, in, in the end, hopefully this is the kind of thing that, you know, if you do want to be a filmmaker, you can, and you saw the theatrical version, uh, you can watch the original film and, and maybe understand some of the sacrifices you have to make, some of the compromises you have to make as a filmmaker, because it is a relationship. I didn't pay for this movie. I didn't release it all around the world. Uh, and, you know, that's something that you have to understand. This franchise is a huge thing for Universal. It, yeah. These movies make a billion dollars um, in merchandise and the, to the toys. What do you think actually going forward for the franchise? Um, what do you think the studio might want to do? Or what would you do if you were continuing? You know, it's, it's I think what we're at a moment uh, that I think the franchise was at, you know, eight or nine years ago where a set of stories have been told and this 37 year old guy came into Steven Spielberg and said, listen, like, check this out. Like, I, I see a path and here's a story and a beginning, middle and an end. And I, I think that we can turn this into something that is different than what it was, which is that it's not a, a bunch of movies uh, with plots about dinosaurs. It's a movie about movie about people who live in a world in which there are dinosaurs. Uh, and that's an important distinction for me. Marvel tells stories that are not about superheroes. They're about people in a world in which there are superheroes. And that was the most important thing for me is to make that transition so that when a younger filmmaker comes in, whoever comes in now and has a vision, they're able to have a vision within this new construct. And I think there are the breadth of stories, the diversity of stories and experiences we can have in the new world we've created is gonna be an advantage to that filmmaker. Do you think that the studio, Amblin, would ever allow Jurassic World to make like a lower budget R-rated movie in the Jurassic World universe? Or do you think it's kind of permanently in PG-13 because so many kids love the dinosaurs? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to answer that question. I don't know. I, I do know that if we, you know, if we made A Quiet Place, you know, if we made a hard R, you know, a really, really scary version, potentially very contained, I know I'd want to see that movie. Um, if a parent took their kid to that movie and, and horrified them for life, uh, I know that would be a problem. Uh, look, I, 
I, I don't want to put any cuffs on whoever, uh, you know, has a vision for this in the future. I think that well, all I know is that people love dinosaurs. People love movies with dinosaurs in them. Uh, and I, I, I know people uh, love the world that Michael Crichton created, the reason why there are dinosaurs and humans in the same place. That sci-fi idea, it's a brilliant idea. Uh, from there, I feel like someone else should come to us. You've spent the last decade making Jurassic World movies, being in the dinosaur business, if you will. This is your first time not having a Jurassic thing in front of you. What is it like as a filmmaker? Are you nervous? Are you excited, like, about the, the future? I mean, I am, and I mean, as we both know, like, uh, you know, everything I have made over the past nine years um, has been in the context of or the shadow of two major franchises uh, that we loved when we were kids. And to have to, to, to be a storyteller, an original storyteller, uh, and present something without it being able to get out of that shadow uh, has been challenging for me. And so to be able to now step out of it, uh, and I know it makes me vulnerable in a different kind of way uh, as an artist, but to go and, and tell stories without it constantly being in the context of, you know, from the guy responsible for making new versions of the thing that you loved when you were a child, uh, you know, that, that's liberating in a way, I'll be honest. I think that the Malta action set piece in Dominion is fantastic, but I'm more impressed with it actually now having been in Malta and seeing how thin the streets how hard are. It is. Yeah, yeah. This is like, it's you know, a small car has a tough time on a road, let alone filming a big sequence. What I mean, can you sort of explain to people the challenge of that sequence? Yeah, I thank you. Um, I mean, it's a testament to all the stunt drivers and, and, and the stunt men and women uh, here. Uh, and Dan Bradley, who's extraordinary second unit director, has done some of the most amazing Bond sequences you've seen. And uh, we worked so closely together to figure out how we were going to pull it off. It's funny because the thing that inspired it for me was Ronan. Uh, you know, it was that amazing car chase through those, you know, those tight little alleys and how tight the walls are. It's like you're in a trench the whole time. And then while we were doing it, I was like, how the hell did they do Ronin? <laughs> like, with, you know, how did they do it? Uh, no, I mean, it was extremely challenging, but I think that's the reason why it feels so visceral and kind of nasty and dirty. And it doesn't feel like we did it on a soundstage or with a green screen at all. Everything you see is real except for the dinosaurs. On that note, I'm really happy audiences are going to get to see the extended cut. Thank you so much for your time. 